decided to hang him up after an incredible 15-year career in the NFL. He was a Heisman Trophy winner, the number one overall pick in 2003 NFL draft, a three-time Pro Bowler. Carson, thanks so much for hanging with us. Thank you so Can much. Can you join us on behalf, I want to make sure I get this, the FedEx Aaron Brown NFL program. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm extremely excited to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm the, the spokesman for FedEx, the Aaron Ground Award this season, so it's a, a great opportunity. I just want to say welcome to the show. I've always been a fan. I never understood why you wanted to be in Cincinnati. I never understood it, but I'm a fan. Why I wanted to be in Cincinnati? In Cincinnati. Playing for the Bengals is what I'm trying to say. Now, I'm not saying you want to be there, but I'm just saying playing for the Bengals. You don't have a choice when you get drafted. That's it's true. It's different if you're First coming out in, years, in high school and you get to you get recruited. I, 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 well, you do have a choice to some degree. You could have pulled a John Elway. You know what true. I'm saying? You could have done that. All right. True. I might have wanted there, to with the Bengals, but that's just me. There's a lot of quarterback right, situations right. to get into mm. that I, I'm really glad we have you. But I want to start with your former team and obviously the Cardinals. What did you think of their decision to go with Bradford over Rosen? Well, I think it was a great decision. I, I think uh, obviously that's not the way they wanted to start the year. Mm -hmm. But Josh has, Josh has a chance to sit behind Sam and watch and, and learn. I mean, Sam's been a vet. He's been in the league for a long time. He's been in a lot of different systems. He sat and watched Sam learn this new system of Mike McCoy, the offensive coordinator. So he's, he's getting a great chance to sit behind a great vet and watch him do it and learn how to get it done. You know, the thing I've noticed since, you know, in the last couple of days, articles on you, pieces on you, is the things you're – teammates have said about you Fitzgerald and others and I know this is sort of a generic question but they're talking about you as a teammate they were so effusive and they seem so genuine um I, I, like when you hear stuff like that what do you think well I mean I, I I think back to the guys I had a chance to play with like you talked about Larry one of the, mm -hmm. the greatest players to ever play the game no let question. alone the receivers no but question. um you know, I, I was molded and, and shaped by a lot of great coaches and a lot of great players throughout my years, and um, I learned a lot. I learned how to be a good teammate. You don't just you don't just naturally fall into being a great teammate. You see great teammates, and you emulate certain things that they do, and I was fortunate enough to play with a lot of great guys. The reason I ask is because we're talking about Josh Rosen, and the one knock against him coming out of school seemed to be he was arrogant or how it, could he lead a team in a locker room? Could he be a great teammate? What are your thoughts about that? Uh, I just, I get so, I'm very tentative to jump in and listen to what I hear about a certain player through the media. Um, you know, I played with, with guys that are outspoken, T.O.'s, Ocho Cinco, um, you know, so many different guys that had a certain perception. Adrian Peterson last year came onto our team, and th there's so many negative things you can hear throughout the media that I let the player dictate and 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 the character of, of the player dictate what my perception of them is, not what I'm reading on an, in an article or hearing through somebody else say. So um, I, I let the player and, and, and I, I let all the stuff that, that comes, all the background, all the, all the garbage that some people say is true, I, I leave that at the door and I, I, I try to see who behavior. they are. Yeah. Fair enough. But I got a quote in front of me. And it might be from the media, but damn it, it came out of your mouth. You have some explaining to do, sir. You set me up. This, no, this I didn't set you up. This I didn't tell him to ask that question. Okay. That that question. That's, okay. That's between you and him. Okay. This is me. Sam Donald is good enough to win the Super Bowl. Is Were those your words? Absolutely. Well, where did that come from? How, where did that come from? What, what, what has he have? done in his career that I, says I, he shouldn't win I the Super like, Bowl? I like Sam Donald. Okay. I, think he's going to win. I think he's going to be very good. What I'm asking is this. I need a timetable. What you trying to say? When? I'm, I'm, How soon? I would never put a time timetable. Oh, that's why I that. it's scared I me because I'm reading the quote. I'm thinking you saying this year. I, I almost lost oh, my mind. Oh, this year? No, that's no, no, no. no. Let, let, let me. Okay. Let, can, I, can I go no, back? Can I go back? So okay. He can set you up all by himself. It doesn't never, never, never die. Never die. What what mm -hmm. Sam does that separates him from everybody else in this draft and from a lot of a lot of players in the last couple drafts is he makes something out of nothing. He can be in a system like he's in right now. And he doesn't have an Odell Beckham Jr., a Julio Jones. He doesn't have Saquon Barkley in the backfield. He's got a bunch of good players around him that they're going to need help to get open. And he has the ability to help guys get open by throwing them open, by extending a play, mm -hmm. by moving outside the pocket, holding the ball for six, seven, eight seconds. Mm -hmm. He's going to take a couple sacks here and there, but he's going to enable guys around him to get open and make them better. I'm going to make it a priority to make sure I have a lengthy conversation with you about this subject as the season goes on. Let me, I will be looking for you, you USC, you USC folks. Fair enough, because I want to get to a different subject. I care about people believe it or not, and I care about the citizens of Cincinnati.
Would you mind explaining to me how in the hell the Cincinnati Bengals have gone 15 years in the Marvin Lewis era and not won one single playoff game? Could you explain how that's possible? There's a lot of factors that go in to 15 years of not winning a playoff years. game. Yeah. Um, but they look good in week one. They look good in week one. Now, oh, you're good. They look good oh, in week one. Oh, you're very good, Carson. Against Indianapolis Colts. But there's a lot of factors that, that go into that. Um, Dalton got hurt the year that it looked like they were going to make a little run. A you got hurt in 2006, yeah. yeah. You know what you should do? You should watch my football life that's airing this Friday night. Something to watch. And I go back and, and talk about some of uh, you talk about that. Some of those things. Oh, really? Some of those hmm. deficiencies. Oh, I can so go watch it anyway. In. I'm certainly Network. not going to miss it now. Because I need an explanation how the hell they can't win a playoff game in 15 years, and you got people acting like Cincinnati special. I've, I've got a good, I've got a, I've got a good, a good explanation right for there. that. I needed yeah. that. That's a good tease. I yeah. needed that. He's good. He's very, very good.